Welcome to the English Riviera, a picturesque and timeless land of ancient tradition, where the quaint local peasants have funny accents and ghostly dreams of a time long since past of self-respect and independence. Welcome to the other world, that lies beneath the gloss of the tourist facade, the poverty-stricken land of smackheads and suicide, piskies and spriggans, giants of globalisation and the little people who they eat for their happy meals. Penzance Agas Diner, the last resort. Farming, fishing and mining are dead. Tourism is our only future. According to the council and the government and the self-serving service industries who contrive to pay a minimum wage to the local serfs that are custom bred in underfunded schools, told to move up the line by the DSS if they want better wages, laughed at from paracentric London where the echoes of a thousand years resistance still scars their arrogant pride. If you listen in the wind, you can still hear the echoes of our forefathers' screams as they were slaughtered from Exeter to Lamorna Stream, and again at Blackheath Field, where 10,000 of us stood and so many died in their fight for freedom. Anne Goff, who led this uprising against political and social oppression, was the last person in England to suffer the barbaric justice of being hung, drawn and quartered. How many dare stand up for freedom today? Kurno is a land of paradox, a land littered with the broken remains of a defunct mining industry, leaving gaping holes in the land where once there was tin and poverty in a land which once held great wealth, but which has been systematically reduced to a weak and disorganised mess. Why? Because it's easy to oppress a disempowered and depressed population, divide and conquer the rule of the English Empire. Are you proud of your English heritage? In many parts of Kurno, poverty is not only usual, it's accepted as fate by so many people who are trapped in it. There's a poverty consciousness which has been bred into our communities through what are effectively economic sanctions. But why? And where's the wealth gone? Our land and our wealth has been stolen by the Duke of Cornwall and his landowning peers, those who sold their souls to the monarchy in exchange for property and tithes many centuries past, but whose legacy of property rights continues strong to this day. The lords and ladies of the Countryside Alliance, the landed gentry whose red coats hide the bloodstains of a tradition of oppression. It's easier to consign such thoughts to history, the history which they write and teach our children in their curriculum. But life on the breadline makes one question the origin of such an imbalance. And what of Cornish history? Consigned to dust with the bones of our unburied forefathers, our voice silenced today as it was then, only politics is subtler now, and the media control where the gun has gone before. The pen is mightier than the sword. Well, my lover, people are changing. The fabric of society is changing. Undercurrents of free thought growing organically through the cracks in the crumbling facade of middle-class comforts. The mainstream may be controlled by a minority with their own agenda. But you can't stop the tide from turning.
communities are growing stronger, evolving from centralised power bases and becoming more autonomous as people take more active control of their destiny, together in a communal way. The issue in the about being Cornish, or hating the English, understanding our history can release fears and frustrations tied into the past, allowing a clear vision of the future to develop. The issue is about social justice, about creating an equal and fair society by recognising the structures which perpetuate unfairness and social exclusions and yanking these systems out by the root. Too many policies locally and globally simply exacerbate situations they're supposed to address by creating dependency on short-term charity, funding and aid rather than addressing the fundamental issues which can make real and sustainable changes to our lives. Government keeps its poor in a state of modest subsistence, using the lottery carrot and DSS stick to keep the financially challenged from challenging the legitimacy of the present state. Anyone who believes that we live in a democracy has fallen for the bullshit of manufactured consent. Have you ever wandered beyond your everyday into the mystery of the other world? When you look at the swelling tides of the Great Atlantic, or the morning sun shimmering on the rippling calm in Mapes Bay. Did you catch a glimpse of who you once thought you were before you were told who to be by society? As long as wealth, land and power is controlled by a privileged minority's political agenda, there will never be an end to poverty or peace in this world. So how do we break the cycle of oppression creates poverty, creates depression? By recognising the pattern, allowing ourselves to become inspired by the infinite beauty of the world around us, and doing what we can do to change, rather than bitching about what we can't. global repercussions, we can subvert the corporate globalisation process. We have a responsibility to ourselves, to our children and to the future to open our souls to the inspiration that is needed to rebuild our communities from their current depression. We are surrounded by so much beauty from which to draw that inspiration. Go for a ramble, open your heart, here.